guys, how's it going? Tia's back again with episode number 9 of the AC Milan career mode series here on Xbox One. Now, of course, yesterday we had to rely on Super Mario Balotelli to get us all three points in a couple of games. And uh, we're in some good form right now. We're coming up against Fiorentina at home in this one. As you can see, we sit fifth in the league now overall. A lot of the teams around us have caught up games played-wise. We sit in the last Europa League spot. Of course, there are three Champions League spots and then two Europa League spots. We almost got off to a perfect start there. So then had Lulic breaking free and unfortunately can't quite find the target with his shot across goal. But uh, we've been playing quite nicely. Fiorentina are a team that uh, aren't necessarily title favourites, or not necessarily favourites because Juventus are clearly favourites, not necessarily title contenders, but they are definitely contenders for those Europa League spots. So they're a side that can definitely cause us problems with players like Miroslav Klose, um, Mario Gomez, you've got uh, Giuseppe Rossi, Joaquin as well as Lulic comes close for the second time after their goalkeeper made a great save from Abu Dhabi on the edge of the box. But we're playing a bit of a rotation side in this one because of course uh, the game in the, in the last episode or the final game in the last episode wasn't too long ago. So we've got some tired players in the squad right now and we're trying to freshen things up with a different team and Lulic plays in or Ilchich rather plays in Mattia Fernandez, but uh, they're not really too much of an offensive threat right now in this game, uh, Fiorentina. We push into the second half, trying to get into the lead ourselves. Ned Alterept has a lovely McGeady spin there, plays the ball into Nigel Dion, gets away from the defender really nicely, strikes the ball at goal, and it comes off the defender's arm. You'll be able to see from the replay, hits him in the chest and then hits him on the arm. You could say it's quite harsh, as it's not necessarily hit him directly on the arm in the first place, but nonetheless, Kaka is going to step up to take the penalty, goes to that far left hand corner and hits the post we stay at nil nil in uh, the opening stages of the second half in this one and if you noticed the uh, notice the fourth official's face there if you go back and have a quick look at it before he puts the board up he actually looks the spitting image of joey barton i tweeted that out a couple of days ago i don't know whether you saw it on twitter if you don't follow me uh, it's at chesnoy gaming there'll be a link in the description etc but um the the fourth official looked exactly like joey barton there and ilchich tried uh, a great or tried a, an advanced rainbow flick there that didn't come off, would have been a great trick. And then they hit the post twice in a matter of a second and a half. And uh, we find ourselves fortunate to stay at 0-0 after they found themselves fortunate when we missed the penalty. But Alexander Lacazette goes on a run of love to force the issue and we take a 1-0 lead in the 75th minute. He's been superb for us as a rotation striker, filling in for Mario Balotelli whenever we do the uh, the squad rotation, etc. So great feat here. He gets a little bit of luck there with the uh, deflection of the defenders but show the presence of mind to then collect the ball again and turn around the next defender before tidily slotting the ball into the bottom corner thoroughly deserved goal and a thoroughly deserved three points for us so we push into the second game at home against Olympiacos in the Champions League now we can settle things here if, uh, if we can pick up a victory, we'll have a look at the league table a little bit later on. But uh, as you can see, we're starting a very, very strong side. A couple of rotation players in there. Erby Manuelson starting at left back. Adil Rami's in at uh, centre back alongside Victor Ruiz. But uh, you'll be able to see from the table that is about to pop on your screen right about now. We sit top of the table, three wins from three. Olympiakos five points behind. So if we can win here, we stand. We'll, we will be an absolute mile ahead of anyone else at the top of the group and stand a fantastic chance of getting through to the next round. But El Shari whips the ball in, up goes Mario, and uh, Roberto makes a great save at his near post. Fantastic save to keep out Super Mario. Hopefully he can be the difference in this one as well. We'll have to wait and see. But Honda's playing down the right-hand side here. Cuts the ball into Mario Balotelli, shows great feet to get away from the defender and acceleration, and it is a phenomenal finish as well. Mario Balotelli does the business for us yet again. Fantastic strike with the outside of his foot to give us that 1-0 lead. And we're pushing onto the half-hour mark, down the right-hand side again, and again cutting inside to this time to Honda, who gets away from the defender. A great strike on his left foot, but unfortunately isn't quite able to find the back of the net. He pulls it just wide of that far post. It was a decent effort. He had a lot of space on the ball. It would have been nice for him to find the... Uh, the back of the net or at least get it on target but nonetheless we have to settle for a chance that goes wide but Olympiacos were proving that uh, they weren't necessarily out of this game just yet Perez absolutely kills me in the box it's a great header not the best to save from Guita pushes the ball away back to danger to Joel Campbell who again is going to twist and turn I don't want to dive in when he's in the box and then we'll just try to force him out wide try and either make him make a mistake or you know give the ball away which is exactly what he does the ball drops to the edge of the box and we are able to clear it so we go in at half time with a Convincing 1-0 lead, although uh, considering that late attack from Olympiacos there, we're still wary of the threats that they uh, pose, I suppose would be the word to use. The threats that they pose going forward 
into uh, into the second half. But it's a lovely ball over the top to Mario Bellatelli. Brings it down beautifully on his chest. Amazing feet yet again to get away. And unfortunately, he can't quite get the finish off this time. But they were superb dribbling feet for Mario. He's progressing quite nicely as a pro. And he's going to be involved again here. They still can't get the ball away. He nicks it off him. Goes with it outside the shot this time. And the second time around, Roberto is able to get down and palm it away. Rather than conceding a goal from that Mario outside of the boot shot. But great feet again to square the ball to Polly. He's going to try and look for uh, for the ball into the uh, into the top corner. Can't find it. And Roberto saves and then makes a second save as well from Mario's follow-up header. But we're going to try and extend this lead again if we possibly can. Polly's shown great strength to get through. Somehow the ball drops to Honda on the edge of the uh, six-yard box. He squares the ball and up pops Rubinho. Up with that lovely header into an open net. And just past the hour mark, we extend the lead to two. And you would expect the game is gone from there. But with 10 minutes from time now, and Olympiacos still aren't done. Dominguez played in behind. He's got a man free in the box. It's Ndinga. Brings it down nicely. Has the shot. Hits the post. It's the goalkeeper. Ndinga again. And we clear the ball off the line with Montalivo. Lovely chest and header back into the safe arms. And uh, willing grasp of uh, Victor Guita as we maintain our 2-0 lead. But Rubinho is going to smash inside and make it 3-0 just before the game finishes. And that really shows the absolute dominance that we had in this game against Olympiacos. And uh, we're in great form right now. Honestly, really, really good form. And we're going to try and take that into the next game. But first, let's have a quick look at the Champions League groups. Because, of course, as we're winning that one, 1-4-4 one, four, four now, we sit on 12 points. There's only two games left and neither Olympiacos or Chelsea can catch us. So we have not only progressed, but already won the group four games in. So absolutely delighted to be able to uh, to be through in the next round so early on. It means we can play some rotation sides in uh, the, the last two games, give our first team players a bit of a rest, and hopefully that should ease the fixture congestion issue. But we've got another game against the opposite, well not the opposite, but the other Verona in uh, Serie A now. Kievo Verona, we played Hellas Verona a couple of episodes ago, and hopefully we can come out with three points in this one as you can see we're fifth in the league now just four points off top we're not that far away and we start off with Montalivo with a free kick and that is gorgeous we had Honda score a free kick for us away at Chelsea at Stamford's Bridge at Stamford's Bridge at Stamford Bridge to uh, to maintain a 100% uh, record in the Champions League and uh, clearly Montalivo wanted to uh, to get on the score sheet with a free kick as well proving to Kazuki Honda that he's not the only free kick specialist in this squad that was a fantastic whip up and down over the wall into that bottom corner bending away from the goalkeeper the whole time absolutely no chance and we take a one nil lead early on but Kievo weren't going to let us take that lead slightly or lightly rather and uh, forcing the issue there Gita with a great save pushing the ball round the post to give them a corner they are going to wicket in though it's Victor Abina on the corner he's so fast by the way absolutely tormenting me in the early stages of this game and the ball is eventually going to drop to them in the box we uh, we just can't seem to clear it maybe a shirt tug involved there but again we have to call on Guita to make a great save and keep them out and maintain our clean sheet which is exactly what we want to do and Balotelli is involved again another defensive mix up Plays in Stefan Alsrawi, lovely Ronaldo top inside, and it's a nice, tidy, easy finish into the bottom corner to extend the lead yet again. Just 20 minutes in, we're now 2 0 up. Not too sure why uh, Alsrawi's default celebration there, because I just press A to do the default cello. They're not sure why that was the apologise or the apologetic celebration, but nonetheless, let's try and extend the lead if we possibly can and really pile drive this result and get as many goals as we possibly can. Honda trying to pile drive with his left foot there, and unfortunately, the goalkeeper this time was on hand to make a decent save. But we play Al Shrawi in behind yet again. So it's great strength to hold off the uh, the challenges of the defender. But the goalkeeper does very, very well indeed to make a, a good one-on-one -on -one save and get the ball to safety out for a corner. But... Matteo De Cilio is pushing into the box, tries to stand the ball up, looking for Honda and Balotelli in the box. And it does take a clear deflection off the defender's hand, as you can see here. Hits him on the wrist, and it is definitely handball, and it's definitely a penalty. Now, Kaká missed the last penalty earlier on in the episode, but Mario Balotelli does not miss. He's such a good penalty taker. Obviously missed the one earlier on in the season, in the opening game of the season, in fact, against Napoli. But since then, he's been extremely good for us, putting goals from all over the pitch, set plays, free kicks, 
penalties and from open play. So very, very pleased to be 3-0 up here. I'm not really too sure what the defender was doing there as they bring it back to 3-1 in uh, the 88th, 89th minute. It's a tidy finish in off the post. Very well done indeed. But uh, I was kind of disappointed that the defender just stopped. I went to call the goalkeeper out and as I pressed Y, my, uh, my defender just kind of stopped running, which was annoying. But nonetheless, we take a 3-1 win. We aren't able to maintain our, our clean sheet uh, record, but nonetheless, it doesn't matter. We take three points. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Our goal difference is still okay at nine. We sit fourth, although Roma and Inter around us do have games in hand. But we're only two points off top of the table now. And if Roma and or Inter slip up, We'll, uh, we'll definitely be in with a shout of getting into those Champions League spots in the next episode. But that's all for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. That would be absolutely super. If we could push 100 in this one, I'd be really, really grateful to. If you missed the previous episode, there's an annotation on screen on the end slate on the right-hand side there to take you to it. If you want to subscribe to the channel and you would like to do so, then feel free to click the annotation on the left-hand side there or the link in the description to do so. And uh, there's, of course, going to be a My Player episode at 9 o'clock tonight in those sub boxes so be sure to come back for that and if you don't follow me on twitter already then hit me up on there as well at chesnoy gaming is the twitter handle and there's a link to that in the description as well but that's all for today or all for ac milan carimo today my player later more milan carimo tomorrow so thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you next time